Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Welcome to the Tribute Series, where we pay tribute to the stars. And here are your hosts, it's Doug and Pam. (laughs) Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tribute Series. I'm your host, Doug, and of course, I've got my sidekick with me tonight, Pam. Pam, welcome to the show. Oh, gosh, I don't even know how to answer that. You call me by my regular name. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just as nervous as the guest is, too. So, uh, so I'm being nice tonight, so be lucky about that. Anyway, tonight's our 100th you, show. 100 shows now we've done since January 6th when we debuted. So tonight's our 100th anniversary, and tonight we have the handsome and talented Nick Scotty with us. Welcome, Nick. Thank you. Hey, Pam, Doug, how's everything? Everything's doing good here. Yeah. Uh, God, I'm nervous, guys. This is like <laughs> I have I, I can't I can't look at your eyes. Okay. It's difficult. But anyway, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, they're bright I pull blue. Pull up pictures of yeah. us and look at them. You know. <laughs> yeah, I put them, glue them up on my wall. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so start painting real quick. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, I don't know. Um, to me, it's easier over the phone. Yeah. Uh, mm. I don't know. Uh, no. I, I, yeah. But whatever. We're going to work it out. We're going to do Yeah, well, you'll, we'll work it out. And then, but you, you're, uh, I would rather be like right there watching you painting and while we do yeah. this. So that would be even more more exciting for us if we were in New York. I'll have to paint when we, well, as soon as I hang up, I'm getting right to it. I have a couple of pieces that I have to get out that I was commissioned to do. So yeah. that's what I'll be doing. Uh, but right okay. now, it's a welcome break. Yeah, no problem. Well, uh, a lot of people may not realize this, that you've, you've dived into to painting so much recently. Tell us about that before we go back in time. Uh, well, you know, it actually is something that I've, I've always, you know, I'm an artist pretty much across the board, but uh, particularly mm-hmm. uh, honed in on it when I, uh, when I was, ironically, on uh, Young and the Restless. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was, you know, basically my life was, you know, script, you know, remembering 10, 15, sometimes 20 pages if you had a big, chunky, chunky part, and uh, uh, scene, rather. And, uh, and you know, so you, you just have to, you know, really, you know, you go to the set, you come home, and you just have no life is what I'm saying. You just, it's home and the set. So I needed some sort of diversion, what something I can do that I could be studying and trying to memorize lines, my method of memorizing, and do something else, sort of, an outlet, some other sort of outlet. And on the way to uh, CBS lot, every morning I would pass this impressive art store, and it was mm-hmm. calling my name, you know. And so I just picked it up again, and and you know, it was just basically doing it to have some sanity. And uh, and then before you know it, I, I I accumulated a pretty impressive collection. And then it would ha- then I had a, a dinner party, and then someone saw it and bought, and then. Word of mouth, I just started selling my paintings and then decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to donate paintings to silent auctions for certain causes. And those did really well. And then I was getting commissioned from you know, people that were bidded out, that lost the bid. They were mm-hmm. wanted the particular style of abstract that I do, which has been compared to the uh, newly deceased Cy Twombly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, and it just sort of happened from there. And it sort of fit into my life at this point. It fits in really, really nice. And it's kind of what I've always envisioned when I was younger. And it was like in the 20s and 30s. And, and if I was ever asked the question what I really, how I see myself when I'm older, I always envisioned myself being old, painting until I died. And that's uh-huh. <laughs> really <laughs> interesting, isn't it? But, yeah. Um, so I do that. And uh, also, you know, you know, so this, the, the, and the great thing is the painting doesn't interfere at all with any other projects that I'm doing. Uh, for instance, just signed with Seven Records um, um, and, uh, to, and released released a song recently. That's you know they're working on promoting and and uh, you know want to do another mix on it um, called DJs Around the World, singing mm-hmm. and, and I wrote the song as well. And um, so and you know I'm still reading scripts. But, you know, it's got to be something really, really good. And as you know, the business kind of took a turn toward the reality oh, uh, yes. uh, aspect, uh, which, you know, 
isn't really what I. Oh, if you could, if you could hear all the sighs and the. <laughs> oh yeah. The people yelling at their screens right now. Yeah, no one's happy know, with right. reality stuff except for the kids, but they don't know any better. Right. You know, it's just you know, it's not being. It's like you know, I'm an act, and I wanted to be an actor, not. And I did a reality show. I don't know if you guys know that. I, I wrote. It was a cooking show, really. Uh, and um, it was a cooking reality show. It was called New York Nick on the Style Network, and it was on only for one season, but uh, it had good ratings, but there was mm-hmm. some shake-up up at E when you know, Mindy left and then new president came in. And so it just made things a little more difficult mm-hmm. to you know, go further. And I really, it was okay. I'm shocked it went as far as it did. It was all pretty accidental, I must say. Yeah, <laughs> it, you know, everybody was just like, you should get a cooking show. You cook so good, and I, you know, all this other stuff. So I was like, yeah, why not? And you know, the reason why I kind of stepped away from acting, but not really stepped away, but you know, just didn't pursue it and push it as much. My my dad got very ill, and I wound up helping take care of him. Oh, so a mm-hmm. lot of people either know that or they don't. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it's just, sometimes you have to, you have to. Uh, Go in a direction that you never could have planned. Right. You, you mm-hmm. know, just sort of circumstances in life happens. Right. And uh, life goes on and change and whatnot. But um, yeah, no, I definitely not. I'm not hanging my acting or singing or any of those hats. But you know, it has mm-hmm. to be the right thing. Oh, of course. Otherwise, otherwise I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. I'm talking I want to clarify so one thing about reality shows, though. We didn't mean cooking shows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I know. Well, you know, we're whole... talking about the Kardashians and all that oh, other stuff. Oh, yeah, the Kardashians, there. the Kardashians, yeah. Yeah, right, and the housewives. Yeah. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I first actually came across you when I saw you on the cover of Newsweek back in the, in like, I think it was like 96, I think it was. Exactly. And I, exactly. Yeah, and I, saw, and I saw that, and I saw your picture, and I was like, Hmm, I, I like to say, I wonder if he's going to go anywhere, what he's, what he's going to do. And then all yeah. of a sudden, bam, I hear that you're doing a song with Madonna. Well, at that time, I was the biggest Madonna fan in the world. So that's yeah. how I was introduced to you. And so how did that come about for you to record the song, Get Over With Her? Oh, wow. I was, at the time, I, I, you know, I was writing. I was, I've, I've always, I've, I, you know, I always was a singer and a vocalist. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and what I mean by that was when I was in school, I was always in like you know, singing and 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 theater and and you know I had you know I was one of the people that was in the choir, and blah blah blah. And, uh, and then also I loved to write, so I incorporated the two of them, and started writing songs. And then I recorded um, a demo with a with a, a pretty hip producer here in mm-hmm. uh, New York, and. Uh, and then I met, I had, I just flew back from Spain because I was modeling and I, I was doing a, a campaign, I think it was Mango Jeans or something with Claudia Schiffer. And mm-hmm. um, I came back and I was tired and I just got, my. I just moved back from Paris actually. So I just got a really nice cute apartment, but I needed to hook it up and I couldn't get, ever get to it. Like I would come home and I get a call from my booker. It was like, okay, you got a job, you got to fly out. So I was like, you know, I'm like told her, when I come back, I don't. I want to be left alone for at least two weeks just to get my, you know, my apartment together. Yeah. She didn't listen, and I, I of course, I got, I got booked for a catalog at the Puck, Puck Building, and the phone was ringing, uh, and they were like, "You, you, Booker, you, oh my God, she's going to stop bothering me." She was like, uh, "Nick, um, could, could you, I think that you should come with me to uh, uh, Herb Ritz's birthday party in Malibu." I go, no, I'm not going anywhere. I told you I need to get to my apartment and tend to business. She wouldn't stop calling and saying, I really think it's good. I really think it's good. And you know what? That's what makes a good agent booker a good agent booker mm-hmm. because I had, I went to the party. I met Madonna and uh, told that she's, you know, yeah, started asking me questions. And uh, I told her I sang and I was a writer. And so she kind of laughed, you know, sure you are. Okay, well, send it to me. So I sent her it. I sent her my demo, and, and she called me with my music blasting in the background. She was, you know, my demo. And she was like, I can't believe that she was singing. And she was like, would you like to do a record a song that I wrote called Get Over? I go, uh, duh, yeah. So she, I said, but not at, I said, but you, 
not anytime soon. I told her I just got an apartment and I wouldn't be left alone. <laughs> 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 and uh, three weeks three weeks later, I was in a plane and I flew and I recorded it with Stephen Bray, and mm-hmm. then re-recorded it and remixed it with Shep Pettibone. Yeah. And uh, and then then that the rest was history and got a record deal on Warner Brothers. Yeah, that that's is such amazing. A great al- that's such a great album. I mean, when I first listened to it, I was like, "This guy's black. This isn't him. <laughs> Who's this?" Yeah, I know. I, know. I, like, I don't know what. I don't know what the hell happened. It's like just you know, it's just what's there. You know, it's that yeah. kind of what comes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I told but, Doug when he gave it to me. He gave me your songs. I was listening to them and I listened to a couple no, probably about three or four in a row and of course I was like in large letters I love 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 this you know it's so great I can't believe he sings like this and very R&B and I said but now I'm going to have to stop listening for a little while because his voice and this singing and these songs make me feel like I need to be with somebody else <laughs> oh no really i thought it make you rethink your relationship holy shit <laughs> no just to be with somebody you Steph, love like, or whatever you oh, know yeah, yeah yeah Steph. listen let's let's we grow we're adults it's definitely yeah. crawling into the sack kind of music yeah <laughs> and cuddling exactly. or whatever it is you want to do and that's what yeah. it is yeah that's exactly what it is yeah and that's a compliment <laughs> yeah no i know hey listen i'm sure that you know a lot of babies were created. I was oh, just getting yeah. ready to say, I wonder how many babies were created from that album. Exactly. <laughs> and it's a good thing you can't see me right now because I'm probably pure blushing? red. But, uh... Are you blushing? <laughs> oh, Pam. Oh, you're cute, Pam. She is cute. Um, so, uh, so before we get into Young and the Restless, you just said that you uh, you got a song out. Is it available to purchase yet, or is it still in the no, in, in the making? No, because we're... we're um, it's seven records, and uh, you know they're, they're 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 what you would consider an indie, in indie. But like, what is that these days? So, you know, you can't even go to a record store anymore here in New York and buy a record. Yeah, right. it's downloaded. You know, so just you know, I, I'll I'll say it, sort of dummied down, just like the act the you know, acting has been dummied down, and it's just like yeah. you know, I used to I don't know about you, but I used to love to go and look at the artwork on an album cover or a CD. Oh cover. yeah, oh yeah. Right? It's part of the excitement yep. of it all. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so, but whatever it is, it's it's not available right now because there's like a 16-bar section in the song that we all feel needs uh, something. And mm-hmm. so we're, we're throwing it around. Uh, there's this, um, a pretty fairly well-known uh, English uh, a rapper from London and uh, we're trying to get him to do something in that section. So, you know, it, but it'll, when it happens, you'll know about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm very and, excited because uh, I'm anxious to hear what what kind of sound you produce now versus, you know, in 96 when you released, uh, or in 93, well, I think it was. Yeah, I mean, just know it'll always be soulful. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and it'll be, of course, produced um, according to the current time. Yeah. Uh, right. Happening now. But uh, I can't change, you know, my approach to to, to song, and that's yeah. always from a blues soulful perspective. That's the no, way. That, yeah. we're not complaining. Keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because there's enough of that bubblegum pop out there. We want you to be, you know, authentic to yourself. Right. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, so how did the role of Tony Viscardi come about for you? Oh, geez. I have all very funny stories. I was so. <laughs> It was raining. It felt like the end of the world here in New York. I never forget it. It rained for like, like it felt like it was literally almost three weeks. Like every day it was gray and gray. Yeah, it wasn't okay. raining. It was just gray. It was one of those weird systems that which wouldn't budge. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I, had, I believe I had really bad allergies. And my agent, who I adore, uh, Ricky Olsen, uh said, called me. It was like. <clears throat> I want you to go up to CBS. I'm going to send you the breakdown of the character for Young and the Restless. It's, it's, uh, and no matter what happens with the part, I still just want you to meet her. And this is a good in. So I go, okay, fine. So she sends it to me. But I really was, I mean, I'm sure that everyone can relate. It was just one of those days where I just felt like being a lazy, lazy person and just like 
do nothing, maybe go to the gym, that's it. And uh, so she kind of pushed me out. And, I, I got, I, you know, I, you know I, I got the uh, breakdown of the character, and it was Jeremy from the Midwest, blonde, blue-eyed. And I'm like, this, she can't be right. This has nothing <laughs> to do with me at all. I mean, didn't, I can be further from that description. So I called her. I go, are you really kidding me right now? Why are you sending me? Why are you making me get out of my cozy bed, rain, everything? Why would I do that for this? And I said, this is not my part. And she said, apart from me, she was like, just go. And I was so mad that I made him really, really dark. And I don't know if you, re- if you remember when I first came on Young and the Restless, he was very s- sort of like... Very, I I made him very dark. I I you know I created, um, I approached him in a very dark way, mm-hmm. very sort of you know nasty boy. <clears throat> yeah. And to talk about blushing. Allison <laughs> had a casting. She didn't know what to do. She was just like, oh my god! <laughs> and I never heard anybody <laughs> read this part like this. I never would have. Okay. And I said I didn't get this. And I, I said I blew that one. And they called me back for a call, call back. I went back, and I just approached it the same way. And then, before you know it, I was flying it. They flew me out to meet Bill Bell, who has passed on, and mm-hmm. Ed Scott, who is the executive producer, and uh, the original Grace, uh, who played Grace. There was two of them. And to read with her, to see the chemistry together. Yeah. And so uh, I went, and... Uh, it was like maybe 15 guys, and I got the part. And I moved. I had to relocate in like 10 days. I had to run back to New York, pack up my apartment, and and ship whatever I wanted, and then just build a whole new life out there in L.A. Mm-hmm. And that was it. The rest was history. And that yeah. So you had to leave the apartment that you just wanted to, to rest in for a couple of days <laughs> that one time. Yeah, it was, my, it was my favorite, favorite apartment to this day. Yeah. But you know what? You can't. You know, there were a lot of great things, obviously, from from that, and it was, you know, it was worth worth the move, I guess, in a lot of ways, and it was sort of bittersweet in some ways. Yeah. How how was you able to go into such a different type of acting? Because daytime is so much different than prime time or film. How how did you get like all the learned all that? Well, you know, it's it's acquired. And it's something yeah. that you learn, and you only really can learn it um, by, you know, being um, disciplined, first of all, because, you know, you learn the basics. Uh, I learned, and I believe most actors learn, no matter what method it is. Um, you know, so you, you kind of, rem- you know, you usually remember the lines, and then you throw them away. You, they're mm-hmm. there. And, but you don't want to over-memorize them. So, though, the key here is that you have to memorize them in such a short-term time that you can't even just live it. You have to just, you do have to memorize it, and you can't throw it away, but you have to bring it across real so mm-hmm. that it has a realness to it. Um, at least it was, that was my, 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 what I wanted to do, and I think mm-hmm. everyone tries to do. Um, I have to say, Michelle Stafford, and Shamar Moore, they were so amazing to me when I started. And I and uh, I bring I say those them two specifically because they they did certain things that were very kind, um, supportive, tri- like you know, hey Nick, you know, don't worry about because you know the first week I have to tell you I fumbled, it was difficult, and you know I had to find all these tricks, and your brain is really a muscle, and it you tr- it it it, it, it it starts to retain you, but you have to learn certain tricks to memorize what's good for you. Mm-hmm. And they gave me certain tools and tricks, and so I'm very grateful to them for that because yeah. then I had confidence, and everybody could see that I created that part. I named him and everything. He, you know, they basically changed it all based on the way that I approached it, mm-hmm. the way I saw him, the back story of his life that I that I made up, and then they said, okay, well, what? What name you want to give him? Scott and Bill Bell. I'm like, you kidding me? I'm going to name him. I'm like, all right, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was uh, that was pretty much it. And uh, I mean, but if you have more questions, please ask. Oh. I have a lot yeah, of young and restless stories. 
Yeah, oh, well, yeah, because we, we are actually, we started the show. The show was originally called Soap Series because we were trying to, we're, we're, we are still interviewing soap stars, but we wanted to branch out from not just daytime, but primetime and film actors and artists of all types. And so, um, yeah, the, the soap opera listeners also enjoy listening to um, soap stories. And then also we like to promote, you know, new music and artists such as, you know, you're talking about painting. Um, I went to your new website, and I have to say that your paintings are beautiful. I, w- I could yeah. just, I would love to have them hanging all over my place because they're just gorgeous. Uh, how do you, you go about getting, I mean, how did, what inspires you to make them the way they are? How, how, what, 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 what brings Basically, you there? Yeah, basically, basically, uh, I can be. I get inspiration from so many things. Sometimes just life. You know, sometimes, you know, I can just be sitting and I can. I you know, I, I went fly fishing a few weeks ago. It's a perfect example, and that's why I I had to find something. A quote from I I originally was going to make it from myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was excited about writing it. If you go into my website, the home page, it has a quote. And with one of my paintings hanging in a backdrop of a large another abstract, and if you stay on the, on the home page long enough, it'll change and it's going to different paintings. It's really pretty. But yeah. I needed a quote, so I got this quote, and it only resonated with me because two weeks ago or so, I was fly fishing with my sister, and my brother-in-law. I was waiting for them on, you know, they had their own bungalow, and I was waiting for them, and my sister's yelling at him, God damn it, I can't find it. Where'd you put it on my call card? <laughs> it was like my cousin Vinny. I swear, I swear, <laughs> you ever see that movie? My, yeah. Yes. My Italian sister in the country with the high heels. It was hilarious. And so, but I'm like sitting there, and I see this cob, huge, huge, the most beautiful designed web um, uh, on the porch, and the sun was hitting it, and the, the work that went into making this web, and I was blown away by it, and so inspired by it. And you know, something like that could inspire me. Uh, you know, it's just. Uh, and then, the, uh, lots of times, I don't even know where it comes from. I don't have. I never, with, particularly with my abstracts, um, I, I just approach it. I usually start with color, and then you know, uh, and what material I'm going to use, because I use different materials as well. Um, mediums that are that is so you know it, and then it just sort of talks to me if I can without sounding like a crazy person that no uh, that's understandable mm-hmm. okay and my my website is uh, nickscottyart dot com and and then it takes you right to the the, the website yeah I yeah, love how the, the I love like how, how the photos, it changes yeah <laughs> that's what I was gonna say I love how it blends in together that's beautiful are you looking at it. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. I, have, I have it pulled up now. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, it, I just I like I like how they you know I know they were working on it this last couple of weeks, so I was I, was, I yeah. went to go check it out and it looks great, and uh, yeah. and I looked at yeah, your I left what's out some, I'm sorry. Bespoke, oh, I was just gonna say what, yeah, bespoke. What does that mean? Bespoke are paintings that are sold already, and oh, okay. that I, or that I was commissioned to do, and uh, and then work are paintings that are available and. Um, I don't even have all of them up there right now, but yeah. you know, because I, I'm, I'm going between, I'm, I'm doing one that's fairly large right now, and mm-hmm. uh, so when, every time I finish to do one, it, when it's sold, then it goes into the bespoke section, and then I keep adding to the work section, okay. and, uh, and then that's how it will go from there. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's what my life is right now, guys, and you know, thank God. You know, everything seemed to mellow out. I had a rough, uh, a really, you know, tough eight to ten years, you know, dealing with my dad being sick, and uh, and then I lost my brother to cancer, and, yeah. uh, you know, it's been, re- you know, it's, that was my, you know, no one can escape it. You, what do they say? you got to enjoy and to appreciate the good, really good times in life. You have to, mm-hmm. you know, no one can escape those times. wish we could, but you just that was my moment of, Everything was just tough, you know. Right. But, uh, you know, so, I'm, you know, now, you know, with all that happening, I really had to take a look at my life and see which, what, what the, the rest of my life from here on in, it felt so profound to me in so many ways. I wanted to make sure that I lived my life in a way that really ple- felt really like it was me giving of myself the way I should have should my calling if you will or mm-hmm. you know, the things mm-hmm. that really mattered things changed a lot you know my mm-hmm. my view of life and what was important and so out of that 
you know, did come some amazing growth spurts for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful. Uh, unfortunately, I had to go through it the way I did, but I'm grateful yeah. for the, that I was at least came out of it, you know, with something that I can run with now. Yeah. Um, well, I, go, I was looking oh. at your IMDb, and your yeah. name is really long, your real name. <laughs> it's so friggin' long. <laughs> <laughs> a few more things on there, huh? <laughs> Domenico Nicolaniero Scotti. <laughs> Who yeah. the hell can remember that? <laughs> now I see why you changed it for acting in that. <laughs> well, well that so changed people it, will remember me. If people would run for me if they were like, ah, run. I remember saying, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, and, and, you know, I'm just so nice like that. I figured, let me make it, let me edit this down for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who were you named after? Anybody or just names that they yeah. liked or? Um, after my mother's father, first name, the middle name, Agnello, is my father's name, which means baby lamb in Italian. Oh. And uh, Scotti is my last name. And Nicolo. Mm-hmm. Nicolo is, a, uh, is, a nick, is sort of a nickname for, for, for Dominic, Domenico. Mm-hmm. In Italy. So, wow. it's a long one. Folks. Yeah, <laughs> and when, I could when, never say it like you. I just can't do accents, so I would yeah. just butcher it. So I'm glad you said it. <laughs> yeah, we we love we love anybody that has an accent. We'll interview the janitor at the local high school if he has an accent. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, listen to me. I think that you should have like you know a a, a you know I I'll, I'll call me whenever you want. I'll give you an accent. We'll play. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be your I'll be your chewy. <laughs> That's funny. Um, now going back to Young Russell for a second, when uh, so, Tony left, he came back as a different actor. What what happened there? I was not happy to see someone else yeah. fill that role. Well, because um, it just was so happened that when my contract was uh, coming to the time of renegotiation, am I staying? Are they keeping me? You know mm-hmm. how all that goes in Hollywood. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, when that happened, and my father happened to get a massive stroke. Oh. And, and so, you know, I made, uh, I made some major decisions. And the one choice that I made was that I was needed here. You know, mm-hmm. with my fa- to be with my family. Because, he yeah. just, you know, he, they just, I know that they needed me. I didn't feel, and, you know, and then I signed, I signed with a different agent for a moment which was another big mistake. I was young. I was being pulled in all different directions. I also had Kiss Me Guido came out, the movie, which was, uh, you know, yeah, big, love that one. large acclaimed movie. And, you know, and I guess as they say in Hollywood, I was hot at that moment. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. so, you know, I had CAA. I had, you know, Kevin, Kevin Uvain wanted to sign me. And then um, um, William Morris. So, you know, it was scary it was a scary good thing because I was really comfortable basically where I was. But, you know, they both, you know, I wound up going with William Morris for different reasons, for certain reasons. I just felt like it just felt better for me. And yeah. and then, uh, you know, then uh, they were like, get off the soap opera, you, you'd be a leading man, but I'm sure that that's the shtick. And that it's okay. No, no, I'm not saying it in a bitter or whatever way because I made my right. choice. And I was like, okay. And I got off the soap opera. And then my father got, and, the, and I didn't get off of it yet. I was considering it. And then my father got sick. And then I just said, this is what I need to do. I have to get mm-hmm. rid of the house. I have to go back and I got to help them. And that, I didn't have to do that. I felt I had to do that because it was like a karmic thing on a, more of a spiritual, deeper level. And yeah. materialistic things didn't matter. It felt like it was important for me. I had maybe some things I needed to hash out with my father. If he was going to die, I needed to give it, make an attempt, and not mm-hmm. by avoiding it, but by embracing it. And yeah. Right. It, and know, I think you'll find of, that with most people, it's either they are going to help. I mean, I went through that with my mom before she passed, where I was with her constantly and helped her any way that I could, versus my sister keeping at arm's length. Right, right, because yeah. everyone deals with things differently. Right, you know, and I had a, a brother who, you know, uh, completely just like made like he just disappeared. 
basically, because mm-hmm. he couldn't deal with it, I think. Right. Uh, you know, but, you know, that's, that's the whole thing. So my choice was to, to do it the way that I did it. And uh, I figured in my life <clears throat> I would always be okay. And, uh, and I am. You know, I just, yeah. I just, you know, you, 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 all, you always will be okay. So it's scary to now walk away from all that I built, right? So mm-hmm. this is the situation I found myself in. But, but yet, I would never have changed it. I, I wouldn't change what I did. And now yeah. I'm like sort of rebuilding it all back up again, in, in this, so to speak, mm-hmm. in a different way. Yeah. You know, I kind of like walked away from it. Loosely, because like I said, in that time of taking help and take care of him, I sat, you know, I literally just got inspired because like all the creative things come to me in ways of inspiration. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to, and it was a joke because I'm sitting now in my dining room at my table and I'm writing the beginning, middle and end of this cooking show idea that I have and how I would approach it. And then I go to, I donated one of my paintings to a silent auction for Diffa benefit and mm-hmm. uh called blood sweat and music <laughs> it was the name of the painting and uh so of course i went i was invited to the dinner and i was sitting there and i was approached and uh you know uh, by uh peter mark jacobson who was fran dresser's ex-husband from the nanny he created the nanny mm-hmm. and he was uh he's like are you were you in that movie kiss me guido I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, my God, I knew it was you. He was like, that was my favorite movie. I was telling him, come over to the table. Would you mind? I'm like, okay, no, we haven't seen an appetizer, but yeah, right. <laughs> so you know, I went over to the table, and then we just started talking. And then I, they were making me laugh. And, of course, you know, uh, it, it, good company is good company. And uh, so... I just talked with them for a little bit, and uh, he said, what are you doing now? And I said, actually, I said, I told him not, without getting too, too deep, I just said, I just took a little break. I said, but now I'm just, I'm writing a cooking show. And he goes, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. He was like, and he said who he was, and then, you know, and I said, he was like, why don't you come down to my loft in Tribeca? He said, and we'll look at it. He goes, maybe I want to get involved with it. And that's literally how it happened. He looked mm-hmm. at it. He was like, this will be great, you know, but then, you know, we had my, my crazy, this is all true characters, my crazy aunt and my crazy sister, and I was, mm-hmm. believe it or not, the normal one. <laughs> like the normal, the nor- that was the normalcy in it all, <laughs> but it was funny, yeah. and it was great, and we had cooking in it, but it was a day, you know, it was a day in life of what I go through, my castings, auditions, my painting, I incorporated all those things, but I find it extremely boring to sit around watching other people's lives, but... Other people don't. So yeah. yeah. Well, you've done just about everything. Is there a book around the corner anywhere? Yes. Yes. And yeah. a one-man sh- oh. and a one man and a one-man show. That's okay. what I'm really starting to develop right now in my head. Is how uh-huh. I want to approach my one-man show because it can be really off the charts. It could be. It could bomb. It can bomb. But you know, you have to do it. You have to do yeah. it. If, you get, if I get the idea, well, you've and I got don't to start it, in Chicago with that because me and Doug will be there in a second flat. Well, maybe I'll start it there and come here, or maybe I'll start it here and come there. <laughs> or we'll just come here there if and we you can. come to New York, and we'll, and you know, you can have like a little, like a couple of days holiday. That yeah, be I've never too. been to New York City, so that's my dream so to go there. You shut the front door. I know. I know. Oh, I've been all. in. I lived in L.A. He's for four sheltered. years, and I, and I lived in Houston. But I never lived in. Uh, in I haven't been to New York yet, and it's. It's. Only, I'm in Indiana, so it's only just a few states away. It's so, so freaking close. Yeah. yeah. I was just in. You know, I was just in Chicago, literally. I was oh, there. No. Uh, I was there like. Well, not just. I was there in October, I believe, uh, for this autograph signing thing at 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 the uh, at at some. Um, what the hell is the name of that place? Anyways, near the airport. Like a Barnes like, and Noble or something? Like a Hilton ho- hotel convention thing. Oh, okay. And it's mm. like it's like it's 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 like an autograph signing thing, where you go and you make you know a bucket of money and you sign autographs and you meet people that are fans and they come with posters of things that you did and record albums and you make people happy and you make some money and it's like right here. But I'm saying, um, Chicago is so close to New York. You gotta come to New York. 
Yeah. I went there for the first time uh, two years ago for my birthday weekend with my daughter and a bunch of girls from the East Coast. We all have a, a singer that we like to listen to and go to his concerts and stuff like that. So we all met out there in New York for the weekend. It was a blast. But I, we really didn't get to do a lot of sightseeing, so I'd love to go back again. Yeah, and I yeah. don't know anybody in New York yet. Well, listen, if you come to New York, I'll, we'll have a dinner. I'll take you to a cool place, depending upon what time of the year you come. Because you yeah. can't sit outside in the winter. It's yeah. too cold. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, there's other now there's other things that you do. You sort of embrace that season, and you go to those places that you really feel the season in those places. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, it is. well, we're kind of used to that here too, you know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we have winter and we have summer. There's like hardly any in between. <laughs> no in between, I know. I know. We're getting some crazy storms here now. It's like with tornadoes. Mm-hmm. Like this, the third one. We just had one today. Oh wow! Yeah, in the suburbs. In the suburbs, really? Yeah, Queens, uh, Bro- Brooklyn had two tornadoes last year, and oh my Long God. Island had three. So far, this is the third one that they had. Oh my God! Like these crazy cells coming, you know, yeah. from the west from you guys. Thank you. Yes, I know. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I always warn my friends on the East Coast. I say, okay, we yeah, just I'm went through a, a blizzard storm. or whatever. Here it comes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But, uh, you you had yeah. mentioned Kiss Me Guido, and that's one of my all-time oh, favorite films. I, I mean, love, that's, love, love. that has such a huge cult following now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been I know. 15 well, it's years cult, now. It, it's a cult classic. In fact, yeah. you, know, inter- you know Interview Magazine, legendary. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you, know, you know, it was in there with Joan Crawford, Mommy Dearest, mm-hmm. you, know, one, you know, that, uh, as you know, one of the cult, Mommy Dearest, Kiss Me Guido is a cult classic, basically, they, they, so mm-hmm. They named it, you know, and and I was in it, so I didn't really think about it. But thinking about it, it's really the truth. It was sort of a out of the box success. Yeah, something that you know was not the norm. It sort of pushed the limits a bit. But that yeah. time, you know, it was just really sort of opened the door for a lot of other, you know, uh, uh, other gay. Theme, even though it wasn't, a, it really wasn't considered, according to the writer and the director, a gay movie. It was, you know, it, it was, you know, largely gay themed. Yeah. So and and so that it opened the minds to people, I believe. Yeah, it, it was, was kind of ahead of its time. Ahead of its yeah. time, but it was it was friggin' funny. It was yeah, it was. Funny movie, and I, you know, I watched it not too long ago just because I was organizing, and I said, oh, God, I haven't seen this. And you pop, I pop it. Let me see how much I aged. <laughs> Hold it up, good boy, guys. I have to say, you can't see me, but I look okay. You look okay. Yeah, I haven't, I I haven't seen good. you a picture lately, so I didn't know what you. I don't know if you look the same or, or, or what. Well, I definitely. I mean, listen, I'm 46 years old, so I matured, but I yeah. still, according to others. Look good. I just ran to someone in Whole Foods. He goes, Jesus Christ, don't you age? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, always good uh, to hear. <laughs> it was good to hear, but was but not so much on my side because I had it because he didn't age good. He just didn't. Oh. Yeah. You know, poor thing. And so, but I, I said, yeah, you do. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you, you. <laughs> you know that's happened to you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where you get yourself into those pickles. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, like, oh, what, how, when you do, I'm not pregnant. You know, yeah. Like oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I've been there before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of a thing. Yeah. I, I remember I, when I went to see Kiss Me Guido, I was screaming at the screen saying, Frankie, G-W-E-M means gay white male, not guy with money. <laughs> I was uh, like, you're was so, so naive, naive, Frankie. So, uh, poor baby. <laughs> poor <laughs> kid. <laughs> poor <laughs> poor <laughs> Frank. <laughs> oh, but that was hysterical, yeah. though. Have, have you, over the last 15 years, have you seen uh, your castmates from that, the, the two leads? Yeah, from time to time, but... You know, you know, closer to when the movie came out, but you know, as time went on, everybody's in their own journey. Yeah. And when you run into them, it's it's like hi, and uh, when you don't, you just really don't really think about it. And that's just the honest truth. Yeah. But, you know, I felt I felt fortunate to be amongst a really great cast like that. 
I know yeah. it sounds cliche. A lot of people say that because it's correct. I mean it. They were great, every one of them. So, you know, I was very. That was my first film. Yeah. That was my very first film. So, you know, they were very gracious and, and very, very giving as actors and actresses. You know. Mm-hmm. So, now with Det- Detroit Rock yeah. City, uh, how did you? How did? How was that experience for you? Because that was a big heavy metal type show yeah. about Kiss. It was great. Listen, I was with, you know, Natasha Lyonne, mm-hmm. uh, who, you know, at the time, you know, no matter what her path is in life, she she was naturally a talented, gifted actress. And, mm-hmm. you know, was, I was with younger people, younger than I, and, you know, I, and it, you know, it was sort of, I was in between both generations, really, so it was kind of interesting yeah. in that a- aspect. Um, but what's even funnier is I can't believe I even got that job. I auditioned for it. I had a huge allergic reaction to some antibiotic that I never knew I was allergic to. So I had all these welts all over me. I looked like oh. lepros- le- like I had leprosy. I'm not kidding. I was scratchy. It was so itchy. I wanted to crawl out of my skin. Oh, and I'm yeah. like auditioning. On the- and I get- so I guess whenever I'm in a bad way, I get the part. I sound that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> If you start Being feeling a, a cold come here. on, go. Yeah, if you start yeah. feeling a cold coming on, go run an audition right? somewhere. Right, uh, exactly. <laughs> go to do something like that. Yeah, but now, it, it was, where, how did you cool. learn how to cook? Oh, um, you know, it's like just one of those things. I just understand food, and um, I always migrated to the kitchen. No matter where I lived, I lived in many different areas in the world. I lived in Tokyo for two years when I was really young i got a con- my first modeling contract and i moved there and uh and so you know I, being from an italian family that's where it goes down life happens begins ends there in the kitchen the mm-hmm. drama whatever is going on is in the kitchen the food right. the smells the conversations you know all of it happens in the kitchen just so, like you see on tv just <laughs> exactly how you see on tv so i'm like now um, re- I'm duplicating that no matter where I go, and I'd be the one to bring all the models together. And I would, you know, I learned just, I guess, who knows um, why uh, to most Italians, just because your mother does it, and she's just, you know, you help her, and she's like, come on, taste, taste, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. And you just learn how to cook. So I would, and then I would, you know, whatever I didn't know how to cook, I would go with a bunch of yen change, and I would be putting it in the payphone in Rapongi with a paper, ma. You know, you have to wait to imagine <laughs> calling from Tokyo, right? <laughs> and in the mid 1980s, and she was like, "What happened?" I go, "Nothing. I need a recipe." <laughs> so she's like, "You moron! You go on me with you spending all this money." I go, "Ma, but I'm cooking for people." All right, <laughs> so she, and I would cook, but then I started making the models fat, and I would then the agents would call my agent and say, "Please stop making this." Oh you know, my gosh! It, yeah. Yeah, I was feeding everybody. <laughs> anyway, so that's I just. Uh, to me, that's where love is, and mm-hmm. where it's, a, where it's a good it's a good place for that. So I duplicate it no matter where I go. So I just got better and better and better and better and better and better. And you you start to understand what goes good together, and you start mm-hmm. to like yeah. anything in life. You live and breathe it. And you get you have to be passionate. So I've always lived my life according to what would make me what I'm passionate about, because otherwise it'd be fraudulent. So mm-hmm. you know, therefore, you know, because I love to cook and I love food. I'm a good cook, you know, and I love yeah. beauty and I love art and I love to give. So, you know, that's why I became a singer and a songwriter and a painter. Mm-hmm. And act, acting sort of falls in another little bit, a little bit of everything there. But, uh, yeah. you know, I do love to paint. and it's, I'm so mm-hmm. peaceful doing it. And uh, I'm just in my own zone. Yeah. Uh, would you like now, to go Now, out of curiosity. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, You're would you like to too. go I know, I know. We pull each other's hair all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shit, I want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> if we had a if we had a, a pool full of mud right now, we can mud wrestle. Um, oh, okay, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's sexy. No, I'm making her blush. It's okay. Um, she Jeez, refuses I'm to do. I'm blushing too now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I would prefer I I would prefer just you know having you in the mud and just you hey. do whatever you want in there. No, Doug, you get out. You get out of the pool. Let Tony in. <laughs> Everybody out. <laughs> oh, I forgot my question. Um, oh.
you were, you were in a you were in a uh, an episode of Sex in the City, and that was you know filmed in your hometown or in your home area. What was it like to to be part of that big, huge, successful show? It was it was an incredible, incredible experience. You know, um, look, you know, I was on one of the t- you know biggest shows on HBO ever had, mm-hmm. and you know with Kim Cattrall and and. You know all the other cast, and uh, you know it was it was a great experience. What can I say? Yeah. I just I didn't think that it's, you know it's one of the episodes. I, I I've gotten more sort of recognition from fans and people somehow mm-hmm. from that one little scene on that. But the episode was based around that scene. I understand, but I mean just in the elevator today, this you know uh, my building, this new tenants, and you know their sisters. They're really funny, actually. You know, they got the big hair, but they're like 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 old school airline stewardesses. They were, mm-hmm. and you know, and they're looking at me, and they're kind of cougarish, and they're <laughs> looking at me, and, you know, and they're looking at me, and, and you see, and then they go, shh, shh, and then, excuse me, I go, yeah. She goes, were you on Sex in the City, the Worldwide Express guy? Me and my sister just saw it last night. I go, yeah, that was me. She goes, oh, I knew it. <laughs> so you know, I get like a lot of attention from that, and it's kind yeah. of. Written. It's kind of funny because it's kind of sexy, you know. Not that yeah. I wrote it; I just in it. I just had yeah. to pull it off and be like, you know, I was kind of like, you know, that, that naive sort of thing again. Mm-hmm. But going for it. Yeah. It was, it was fun. It was. It was a fun. It was a fun role to play. Absolutely yeah. fun. Yeah. Did you see that, Pam? Because if not, we'll have to get that for you so you can see it. Because it, it was a fun little show. Because oh, I, I remember no, watching it. it and I it said, hasn't Pam mm-hmm. blushed enough? I know. Really. I know. I haven't seen but, enough. No, I haven't. Oh, you have enough. to see. You have no idea. Every single night, Doug is Skyping me movies to watch. I've got so many movies that I, I don't even oh, know where to so start half the she's time. putting it on you now, Doug. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's all my though. fault. Oh, but it's okay. everything that I it's everything that I want to see because it has yeah, like I, a favorite actor in there or yeah. and somebody we're interviewing. So it's you know, it's work but it's pleasure. Right. Yep. Well, Doug, Doug sounds like he's a passionate person about yeah. knowing what's up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I try. To, I try to keep her in the know, and uh, you know, uh, we, and we're, and we're only going after people that to talk to that you know, not only we're fans of, but you know, people that I know want to hear from. And and literally, ever since you uh, left Young and the Restless, and and I saw, and then I saw you on Kiss Me Guido. I haven't seen you for a long time, and I will always like would like back in the day when MySpace was popular, I would look for you on MySpace, and then when Facebook and and all this other social media, and I was like, gosh, I wonder how I can get a hold of him. And then I was able to get a hold of you through uh, your management, and I was like. Ah, oh, finally, so I can see what he's up to. But yeah. these interviews are really more like, like phone conversations with a best friend you haven't talked to in a while, and, it's, and that's what they kind of sum sum up for us. Is like we don't, I don't get as uh, nervous. Well, actually, I am tonight for some reason. I'm yeah. Aware, but, um, <laughs> Am I making you um, nervous, Doug? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, just a, just a little bit because you're, you know, you're Nick Scotty. I mean, you know, that's, that's yeah, a huge. That's a, <laughs> I've been nice. I've been, I've been playing. I've been playing nice in the sandbox. Yeah. yeah, or or in the mud in the mud wrestling ring. Yeah. Oh, um, that, you see, well, your mind is dug all the time. Yeah, uh, it only takes a little bit for him to go t- off. I I'll see that little, little push, and he's all falling down. I uh, know, really. And then after we're disconnect with you in a few in a little bit, we're going to uh, play. A, I'm going to play a few of your songs from your debut album, and uh, you, you know that you can't even get that anymore. I've looked everywhere. I mean, because I lost my really? hard copy of it back in the '90s. Some people stole my stuff out of college, and it, your CD was in that. But I mean, I have a digital copy that I had backed up, but you, I can't find that CD anywhere, like on um, Amazon or um, iTunes or anything like that. Is there a place if, if where you, fans can buy it? I'm going to tell you what to do because a friend just okay. bought it. I would try just putting in Nick Scotty, Google mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. You'll have to go through, you know, certain. You'll see, you know, uh, you know, either you know people or places that sell it. Mm-hmm. You know, it just unfortunately have to go through it that way. But Amazon did have it, but I don't know what mm-hmm. happened. You know, oh, okay. Just have, you know, but there, there, that you can, you can get it. You can buy. Yeah. I wish I had one to send you. I would send it to you, you know, yeah. straight away. But I, unfortunately, I'm down to one. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have the album, like, you know, if I wanted to frame it and, you know, everything like that, the actual large album, because when you, when you, um, at the end, when you, when you do, whether it's a CD or not, you have, you make an album, it's, and it's where they sync everything, 
sync everything uh-huh. up. The last steps, everything is perfect and sounds great and clear, and there's no static or nothing. And yeah. uh, then they give it, they give it to you, and it's like old school, like big record. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh, okay. Now, you know, now there's you a, th- there's, I was going to say, there's a place in Little Italy that we went to, um, and I cannot think of the name of the shop to save my life, but he always has like older records yeah, like that. There, there, there are, if you could find those places, they do exist. You know, and they're usually you're right. They're usually downtown, and like, or you know, you know. Now I would say that they're probably because you know what used to be the East Village, and you know where the artists lived. Now it's pretty much they're in Williamsburg or Dumbo, and down there. So you know, you got to follow the uh, the Bohemian artists and where they are. You'll find things like those kind of shops that have old albums and stuff and CDs. Yeah. But like oh, I yeah. said, if you put my name in, I, 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 I heard, you know, like I said, my friend just got it, and I didn't ask him how, but I think that I somehow uh, was fussing around and just looked at a curiosity to see what got Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll see what I can find for it, because I like to have it, you know, have it again. I actually don't even own any uh, physical CDs anymore. I, I mean, everything's just digital, I mean, because everything well, is now iTunes. Happens. Exactly. And, and uh, I miss, like you said earlier, I miss going to, I, I used to go to every Tuesday, new release day, and like stay at the record shop for all day looking at the new albums and new CDs and heck, I remember cassette tapes and all that back in the day. I actually had your cassette tape when it first came out, I believe. That was a long, that was a long time ago. So I'm ready for some new music from you. Are you, are you going to work on an EP or an album or um, what is your well, plans with that? Right now, uh, I have, I, ha- I have. If I wanted to say that I had an entire album, I do. I have, I have it all written already. But I mm-hmm. chose to release that one song as a single, and it's more clubby. And uh, and now uh, I um, just got a call from this woman named Christina Villa, who is produced things, and she. You know, she's someone that I know from the New York scene and stuff like that. She's had some success, but she's just come in contact with, like, Nile Rodgers and people that worked with him or on his level. And um, and she they, she, they want to work with her on some things, and she brought me up, and they were like, oh, yeah, I, I, I know, he's got a great play, whatever, and they want to work with me now and do mm-hmm. something. And then, uh, and then I, so I have a couple of things that, you know, sort of outside of that I, so I'm not my point is I really don't know all I know is I'm producing things and then mm-hmm. I'll know how to put it together in what way shape or form that I will present it to the world I just knew that this one song DJs around the world was a universal song it's mm-hmm. a feel good song and I wanted to just put it out there as a single and just sort of build some sort of a wave and then I'll know where to go from there it's an old school way of reinventing and putting yourself out there. Um, yeah. And you know what? I found it on Amazon. What? Your album. I found it. Yeah, it, yeah I, I, it's on it, there, but it's like uh, seven new for 97 cents. And, I'm, uh, you know, it's like, so it's not Amazon doesn't have it. It's these other little shops. Right. That, right. That, that. I was going to yeah, say, if I mean. you go to the little links that they yeah. have there from people that are selling it from their stores, yeah, you yeah, can my friend get it. it. Yeah. That's what my friend was. Well, you can't beat ninety-eight cents, but that's kind of a, that's not fair. <laughs> but but you, have, but you have the song, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know, but still. And I just looked up "Kiss Me, Guido," and that's out of print, so you can get them uh, for thirty-five dollars uh, imported. I was like, wow, I didn't even know that. I, they need to hurry up and put it on Blu-ray, so then it'll be re-released. I know again. what's up with that. I think it's really. But, uh, okay. Um, so, are you on Twitter officially? Because there's people that are pretending to be you. So, I was just wondering if that, if you're on Twitter. I am on Twitter. Okay. So, which one is you? I don't use if, it though. That's the whole thing. Uh, I'm so stupid. I don't even use Facebook. I, like, I'm just like one of those people. Like, uh, I'll you I'll check it or you know, but I don't. You know, people want to follow me, and then I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. But I'm just I just don't tweet things. First of all, unless you know, I may I may start to. But I guess that I just not been in that mode. <laughs> yeah, I just never really tweet much. But oh, yeah, I am okay. on Twitter. I am on Twitter. Oh, okay. And because uh, you, I mean, with, with your music coming out, it'd be great to 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 be able to get to your fans, so your fans know to you know 
to buy your yeah. your music when it comes out. So it's really it's it's really and once you start, art. it's a dick yeah. and, and and your art as well to sell you know to promote your art. I mean, we'll promote it to death, but coming from the artist itself would be really good too. So that's just my little two cents on that. I agree <laughs> with you. you. I agree. You're right. I should definitely now. Now is the time to. Well, now that I have my website, I'm going to tweet it and do all that stuff. But I haven't. Yeah. I haven't really done it because like every time I turn around, it's uh, another. Uh, more important priority. Yeah. So, and I know that that sounds weird, but it's just sort of just the way. It's been, and I've been going away every weekend with my family and just you know enjoying the summer weekends more than the usual. Uh, yeah. And, uh, well, that takes two days out of my week usually. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go, uh, we're gonna take some fan calls. You got a few people that want to say hi to you. Sure. Um, so we'll do that and then we'll wrap up. Uh, first up is another Pam, the good Pam. Um, Pam, welcome oh. to the show. <laughs> hey, come on. Oh, you just Pam's remember that dog. tomorrow come when on. we have another show. <laughs> uh, she's good. Hi, hi, Nick. How are you? Hi, Pam. How are you? I also live in New York, but I live the opposite way. I live in Rochester, New York. Oh, I know Rochester. Yeah. How's yeah. it going up yeah, there? Oh, the last few days we had really bad storms, and our cable, internet, and phone stuff went out from noon today till about eight something. It came back on tonight. Oh, I'm glad you got it back. I know it's been crazy here too. So my, I'm, I'm laid up like with a bum knee, and I had nothing to do. You know, I got well, to keep my knee up, you. and I had no. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Oh, uh, Nick, I have your CD you too. Oh, you too. Yeah, I got it. Oh my God! Years ago, when you uh, let's see, it came out in '93. I forgot how I got this. Um, because I used to write to you when you were on The Young and Restless. Right. And I think you sent me like a flyer how to order it, and I think that's how I got my copy of it. Wow. So that was a long oh. time ago. See, I don't remember anything mm-hmm. that I, I don't even remember what I have for breakfast right now. But I'm glad that I sent that to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Well, Pam. But I hear you having a new you. CD out, and, and when's that going to be out? Do you know? Well, it's a single, and uh, okay. uh, I'm working. I'm working. Just yeah, it'll be soon. So, uh, um, um, I can let, if it's okay with Pam and Doug, I can let them know, and then maybe they, or I'll tweet it, or you know, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. You know, mm-hmm. it's just um, you'll, we'll you'll, promote you'll, it. You know, yeah, you'll you'll know, you'll know, you'll know. I'll help exactly. promote it too. It'll be it'll be <laughs> soon. It'll be soon, Pam. I'll help, too. Perfect. Yeah, it'll be soon. Okay. So my question is, what haven't you done yet that you would like to do? Uh, that's a really, really, really good, good question. Uh, but I don't know how to answer it, unfortunately. I think that, you know, this is the whole thing. I've done, um, I'm doing what I haven't done, and that's, really being the one to decide not like sort of accidental things or doing things out of you know growing up things would sort of fell into my lap now i'm starting to live my life truly 100 percent the way that i want to live it and so that's really good but I, I i'm basically doing it you know i live in the moment in the now it's really important for me and uh you know man plans and god laughs so i'm afraid to say anything you know, I just want to be where I'm supposed to be, and that, and I'm where I'm supposed to be right now. And thank God, healthy and happy, and and enjoying life. So, does that answer your question, Pam? I hope it did. Yes. I mean, it's really um, nothing that I could say. Like, I wouldn't want to like go jumping out of a plane or anything, um, and nothing that I could really, really think of. You know, it just I'm just trying whatever to actually, comes your way. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and like really focusing on like, like keeping life simple and uncomplicated as possible. Yeah. Sorry about your brother passing away. I lost my mom to cancer in '79, and I lost my um, sister. Oh, I'm sorry. 16 years that. ago, I lost her 16 years ago of cancer too. The cancer as well. Yeah. 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 16. Yeah, uh, 16 years ago, and her little daughter. Well, she's not little anymore. Michaela doesn't even know her mom. That she was just a few months old when Debbie passed away. Uh, well, the youngest doesn't even know her mother. Wow. So she was young. Yeah. yeah my brother. My brother. My brother was. Yeah. My brother was like 49 years old. So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's a tough one, but you know, 
makes me, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, when things like that happen, Pam, as you know, I don't know about you, yeah. but it makes you think about life differently when you lose, especially. Oh, yeah, I did, especially when my mom passed away, you know. Yeah, it changes your whole perspective of mm-hmm. life and whatever that means to you. And uh, yeah. it definitely is deeper thought in, in, in things for me. And so, and, uh, but you move on and you do things and you hope that they're happy and smiling, right? Yeah, definitely. Can I ask you another well, quick question? Sure. Okay. Uh, did you ever get married? Do you have any kids? <laughs> well, not well, that I, I know of. I was asking if Pam. Not that I know of. Not that I know of. Do you have any kids? Not that I know of. I was just curious. <laughs> now I'll be getting calls. Where's yeah. my chart for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Nick, didn't you know I met you a few years ago and we got two kids together? Yeah. Are they cute? Are they cute? <laughs> oh, yes, my Pet. boys are very attractive. Yes, they are. Pam, he's Italian. Pam, he's got kids with dogs. I've got Italian sons. <laughs> oh, tell you I'm, ovu- I'm ovulating right now, so. I'm are saying. you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could be worse. You could be uh, crowning. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll stick to just drop an egg. Oh, okay. Yeah, drop an egg. <laughs> hey, Doug, Thank you, I, I'm laying down. I, I'm laying down because I got my knee up, so I'm not going to hang up, okay? I'm going to listen to you guys on the phone. Is that okay? Okay. Oh, That's yeah. Fine. Yeah. Uh, all right, no we're going to go on to Thank Pam. you, Nick. It was nice to talk to you, Pam, and so I hope your knee feels good, okay? Thank uh, you. Okay. Bye. All right, okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Um, yeah, I, I tend to not have a filter, so things just come out. I forget that I'm Doug, doing a Doug, professional interview. I don't have a filter either. This is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I totally forget that I'm a human. I just speak, and I don't think before, and I've gotten myself <laughs> my foot in my mouth so many times. Good for you. Uh, That's the way it you, should be. I don't know why people you know, put that down. I know too many too many people are reserved and scared to speak the truth and and we have another show called the reality series where it's uh, you know talking about no show biz it's just real real life real topics real people talking about you know it's, I'm like Oprah but white and poor and um, <laughs> <laughs> and That's so. Fun. So we're we're working to try to help wake people up and you know get people to speak and you know I told my whole story on the first show and uh, you know to try to see if I can help anybody out there um, that may be going through some of the things that I went through growing up and so that's kind of like I you know why are, people are like why are you so honest I'm like well okay you want me to be a, you want me to lie and just not say the truth so yeah, it's really important it's it's really important to uh, show that you know behind the the smiles and the laughter there's a lot of you know stories to tell behind everybody's life so. Yeah. That's that, that's that project. Um, I, okay, I uh, dig it. I dig it, Doug. And you don't want to know what? I'm going to tell you something that I discovered. Because I'm a lot like you. Uh-huh. Sometimes offensive to people. Not meaning to. I think I'm doing a good thing. But people mm-hmm. sometimes aren't ready to hear the shit you want to. Excuse me, I'm cursing. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. That's okay. It, it, we don't have people a bleep button. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, good. So anyway, I don't bleep. You know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't filter things either. But I think the truth is... The, and it's never comfortable for us when you speak the truth and you just speak mm-hmm. what's on your mind. But that's really love, if you think about it. Yeah. If you're being lied to is not. Being lied to is, is crap. You know? So, you know, keep that non-filtered thing. You know, as long as you... You've got to have a little bit of... You know, I've done some doozies, like I said. Believe me. Yeah. I, I'm trying to keep... Make some sort of filter that doesn't exist exist, but... Yeah, so you have to try a little. I have to try a little harder. Yeah, but I mean, I have tax, fun. but I, I, yeah, I, what? I have, I have tax. I mean, I, I'm not going to call somebody. A, you know, a, well, I'm not. Gonna, I don't even know what I would call them, but I'm not going to call somebody. My, no, mine's you know, more you're of not, a, you're like, not mean. You're not mean. You're not mean. Right. Yeah, I'm right. not mean. I'm just truthful. I mean, I just put That's it out right. there. And but that can, if you you know that truth, that truth can hurt, can can disturb other people that don't want to see the truth. Yeah. Sometimes. You know, ignorance is bliss to certain mm-hmm. people and to a lot of people. But yeah. you are seeing something, like you told me, well, you should get on Twitter, but I could have said, well, how dare him? You know, <laughs> certain people, are, no, because some people like, well, he doesn't think I know. But yeah. I know you were coming from a good place. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, I yeah. could have said, well, don't you think I know that? Which I yeah. do know that, but I let you just talk. I let <laughs> you talk like I just <laughs> fell off of a cannoli truck. <laughs> just okay. now. 
Okay, I think I'm going to come. To, I'm booking the next plane. We're going to have to yeah. fight in the mud wrestling now because you right. know it's on like Donkey Kong, son. You're right. <laughs> 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 oh jeez. Okay. Uh, let's see. David, are you there? Yeah, I am. Sorry, Hi, I was Dave. talking. I need to put a fork in it. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Okay. Hey, Nick. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm hanging in there. Mission oh, Y and R. You too, huh? That's nice to yeah. hear. That's nice to hear. Listen, I, 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 I miss, I miss a good portion of those folks, and you know. And being with, you know, uh, I'm sure a lot of things changed up there, but I miss it. I miss it as well, certain aspects of it. But, you know, life sort of went on. So you're going to have to, you know, yeah. keep an eye out on what I'm doing next. And, you know, hopefully I can give you something in another arena. And I, uh, so. I got a question for you. Hi, huh, Dave? Who? I have a question for you. Yes. Um, who has been the biggest influence on your painting? Um, it's really, really strange, Dave. Uh, life. Life. I've never followed another artist. It's just something that I just picked up. And it's just, I don't know where and how I know, but I do. And, uh, you know, I never took classes. I just I just started painting. But, you know, I, I kind of, if I had, without sounding corny and sort of, occult like I kind of go in this weird trance it really feels like that like I just get like I get guided by it and I, just, I don't have a plan it just happens if I would have put it into a certain way of saying it that's the best I can say so but since I've been painting now um, now I since I'm living it I, I go to museums and I want to see other fellow contemporary artists and the greats, some of the greats, and um, you know, and and I'm 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 more inspired now, and so yeah, Cy Twombly. Since I've been compared, I've gone to see him in museums and his work rather. He's now deceased, obviously, and I wouldn't have seen him, but his work, and I could see what other people see, but then I could see the differences. But then I, I mean, and then I get in, in I, I'm curious about his life and where other artists come from and how they're inspired. And so I delve in for those purposes, um, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. It's all about sense. life, Dave. It's all about life. That's all. Yeah, about life. You know? Hey, Nick, thanks for talking to me. You're a cool guy. Dave, <laughs> you're welcome, and you're cool as well, and I hope you have a good, good, great, great night and week. You too, sir. And Okay, yeah. take it easy. Thanks, David. Yeah. Bye. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, am uh, I screwing this interview up? Or am I doing okay? No, you're. Oh, fine. you're you're doing great. You're you, no one would even tell you were nervous. You're a pro at this. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I'm a professional yeah. person, but I'm not nervous anymore. I gosh, I feel like we're family now. And exactly, and we're family, and we're. Yeah. Now, yeah. when we come out there, you're going to have to make us. Now, I'm curious to hear the answer to this: some gravy or sauce. Which one do you well, use? I I say sauce. Okay. But I don't mm -hmm. even say I don't even say sauce if I make if I want to make something to accomp like to 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 be on top of my pasta I'll say mm -hmm. what type of sauce either a marinara a bolognese um, things like that. Okay. Or, you know or you know I, or if it's somebody that we like what what are you saying I'll, then I'll say sauce I, you know okay. like, I'll, I'll leave to the <laughs> sauce. Not the I gravy. have a million Italian friends, and it varies between the two of them. Most of the time, it's gravy, though. Re really, I know that's yeah. pretty. It's pretty, pretty common. But no, it's uh, and they're not completely wrong because, uh, you know, they, if they're talking about a Sunday sauce, because it's a Sunday sauce, mm -hmm. and that's done with a lot of meat, and mm -hmm. so then it sort of is a gravy. The way you know Americans would say a gravy is, which is you know done with roux and a roux and, and beef or or chicken, whatever or turkey. Right, right. You know you make you know you build it up from there. But it's really for all intents and purposes, the Sunday sauce is a gravy. If you really want to say so, I'll rock with that. Okay. So if we're talking about that <laughs> Sunday sauce, then I'll say gravy. Now you're making me really hungry. Thanks a lot. Really. 
I want. No, I've, I've been eating. I've been eating. You don't even know. I, I made. Ho- I made homemade macaroni and cheese from scratch, and oh. I've been eating it. So now, because I'm just like now with family, so I'm like eating in between, you know, talking. So it's like another <laughs> gift to have. Talking, oh, that's talking. fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely fine. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're planning on a, a, a some tr- some trips soon. We're gonna go to L.A. Hopefully, once we can uh, to to meet up with some of our guests that we've met, and now we have a reason to come to New York. So, um, we're gonna be right on top of that. All right, that sounds awesome. And is this interview over? Oh well, I mean, hey, we can talk all night long. But if you, <laughs> no, you, you, you got you got macaroni. <laughs> I do. I do have mac- macaroni and cheese, and I'm gonna pig out on it. That's right. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let it be known. Now, yeah. Well, um, this has been a, an honor. I'm actually like a dream come true. I mean, after all yeah. these years, uh, to be able to, you know, I'm so glad I was, I created the show and you brought Pam on uh, to be my co host. But, I mean, we've talked to people that we've admired and, and loved all for so long. It's just so. You know, we try to not show our nervousness and excitement because, you know, we're trying to be professional. But each time we talk to somebody, it just feels like we're talking to people like we just, you know, like a distant family member that we haven't talked to for a while or a friend from high school. And it's just really, it, it turns into a comfort thing, like you said. And, and, and now now we got a friend. So now we, you've got a right. friend and a fan. That's right. That's so, correct. Uh, and I felt the same way. Uh, it was a pleasure to chat with both of you, two of you. And uh-huh. um, it's been it's been just sheer enjoyment, and I nope. thank you for having me on the show. No problem, Pam. Do you want to say anything before we go? Come on, Pam. Blow me a kiss. <laughs> go on and do it. Your husband will understand. <laughs> uh, does he matter at this point? <laughs> <laughs> Who's he? <laughs> what kid? Is there one there? I don't even know. <laughs> what, what? Where did he come? Oh, jeez. <laughs> What's going on? I'm, bra- I'm breaking up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. Instead of saying kiss me, Guido, I have to say kiss me, Nick, then, right? You, yes. Oh, you okay. can really, or you can really get daring and try to say the whole full name. That's oh your my homework. Gosh. That, I, that I is would your be homework, so Pam. Terrible. I'd be so <laughs> terrible. I just, I actually oh, did. Oh, come on, guys. Years. Everybody applaud. Ah! <laughs> yeah, he's so cute, Pam. Oh, come on. All right. You'll be like, okay, now today I'm going to have Nick back on to say his name to him. And then you'll say it. And either you'll, either way, it'll be so cute. Even if you screw it up, it'll be cuter. Oh, my gosh. You have no idea. I did take two years of Italian in high school. And I took um, Spanish, but either way, I sound like a white girl trying, so I just I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so roll, so roll of the tongue. I yeah. can't. Somebody's got to teach me how to roll R's and roll whatever well, listen, letters. We could talk about that when you come to New York. Maybe I'll give you a couple of roll tongue rolling lessons. <laughs> oh my! Now that doesn't sound right. Oh, God. <laughs> Pam, you bitch! You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now. But in the mud hole. Where that came from. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, my oh, cheeks are okay. all the way up to my forehead. Oh, to I will what? say grazie. Okay, grazie for doing Prego, amore. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll let you go. Okay. Chow down on that mac and cheese, and uh, I'll thank, send you the link you. to your email, and we will keep in touch uh, about and and I'll, once we are songs out, we will help promote it. We'll have you back on the show to promote your music and your art again, and we will see you in New York whenever we can get there uh, before the end of the year. Yeah. And you email me the link. You, you email, yes, it sounds great. Did you email uh, me the link, though, Doug? Like you oh, it's right here. Like, I'm getting ready to press. As I'm getting ready to press. Send hey, you better hang- stick my phone number in there, too, Doug. <laughs> Go ahead, Doug. Me and Pam's God. got a thing going on. You right? Oh, God. I guess you grew <laughs> my balls. I guess I really am ovulating. Did you say balls and ovulation together? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gobslapped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'll send you a night. Thank you right, so I'm much, you Nick. Now. I'm going to eat. Yum, yum. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye, Thanks. Nick. Good night. Bye-bye. Oh, gosh. That- Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. <laughs>